It's been a while since I watched One Piece. I haven't progressed farther than uh, where I last watched. The last one I watched was uh, they went to Cake Island. Candy Island? Cake Island? Let's see! Alabasta! This one's uh, chosen by the wheel. Let's go! You know what's Alabasta not is hilarious. a controversial opinion? What? Crocodile did everything right. Like, not morally, of course. Morally, really? the actions he took in Alabasta were pretty reprehensible. But I'm just saying, like, if you were going to be a villain, you would want to be Crocodile. I mean, he had backup plans. He had contingency plans for his backup plans. He really thought of everything. Except for a lunatic and his... Dude, I want a poster of... Uh... Brook. The SK Brook. This looks really good. Man, what a poster of this one. This is amazing. He has the best poster out of all of them. <laughs> his wanted poster is just the uh, promotional for his concert. Man, I want this. His backup plans. He really thought of everything. Except for a... Oh, wait, wait. Actually, Frankie's is also nice. <laughs> they took a photo of his uh, Gundam. That's pretty cool. I want Brooks and Frankies. Lunatic and his band of misfits going into a country that they had nothing to do with and just <laughs> ruining <laughs> everything. And so that's what I want to talk about today. The events of Alabasta through Crocodile's mm -hmm. eyes. But before we get there, I think it's important to set the stage. You know, there's a lot of events that happened before Alabasta that Crocodile knew nothing about, but were pivotal to the plot. Luckily, there is a character's POV we can take that were following the Straw Hats from as early as Reverse Mountain and stayed with them up until the end of Alabasta. And that is Princess Vivi. So, mm -hmm. follow me. You are Princess says Vivi Nefertari, yes. and you have infiltrated the criminal organization known as Baroque Works to try and get intel on the mysterious Mr. Zero. Now, you suspect Mr. Zero Mr. is Zero. the leading cause of the rebellion that's happening in your hometown. This rebellion is going to start a massive civil war, and your father, the king of Alabasta, is being framed as just being an awful king that's hoarding. Wait! He's not gonna start the rebellion because she knows the leader of the rebellion. What are you talking about? Vivi knows who the leader of the rebel army is. Crocodile did not start the rebellion. There's already a rebellion, and it it's it's his it's it's her friend that's starting the rebellion. I guess in a way, Crocodile spurred it to happen because he was pulling all the strings behind the scene. But the, the rebel army is led by her friend because they were framing the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah this thing called dance powder which is a material they use to summon the rain now in the desert that's something that's extremely valuable and it looks like currently the king is hoarding it all for himself and all of his royal family members well he is that's though what you're doing you <laughs> he's hoarding it though duh, duh, duh. plot twist the king is actually hoarding it <laughs> also remember that one scene where like there's these merchants who offer the powder to the king right Oh wait, that was from the flashback. And he was like, we must investigate this. Oh yeah, yeah, never mind, never mind. I was gonna say that, didn't he approve it? Wait, in the flashback, he didn't approve it. He was against it. In the flashback, there's a lot of the powder. In the palace, right? Did they confiscate it? They probably confiscated it or something. You are deep undercover and you're currently on a whaling mission. They sent you on this mission to kill this whale and bring back some meat to the village. Okay? Now you don't really want to do it. You bring love animals, but meat. you're deep undercover. Like, you gotta, you gotta stick with it. But before you manage to kill the whale and take the meat, this crackhead and his band of lunatics stop you from killing the whale. And you're kind mm -hmm. of, you're happy about that. You didn't the really want to do it anyway. So after they stop you, <laughs> oh, no. you meet the old man that's taking care of the whale. The old man gives you the whale's backstory. His name is Laboon, and he has oh just my the God, saddest Laboon. backstory that you can think of there's tears in everybody's sad. eyes you think wow i'm so glad these guys stopped us like i'm i really hope laboon finds his happiness and while everyone is thinking of laboon and praying for his happiness the crackhead stands up and punches him right in the face like he just starts <laughs> a fight with this whale yeah, for that no was reason silly. i mean in just the most brazen act of animal cruelty like sure you were gonna <laughs> kill the whale but that was for food this crackhead just started fighting him because 
you know, he got tired of sitting down, I guess. You don't know what's going on. So you think, okay, no, these, these people are crazy. All right. And then after that, he brands the whale with the most god awful drawing of his own pirate flag. Oh so my it reads as like this symbol of ownership. You're like, dude, let Laboon live. What are you doing? <laughs> but it gets worse. You see, in the middle of all of this struggle, your ship was destroyed. So you don't have any way of getting back home. So you ask this crackhead and his band of misfits, can you guys just give us a ride back to our home in Whiskey Peak? They agree. And you start learning a little Whiskey bit more Peak? about these people that you're traveling with. Okay. There's a woman who is a thief and she would literally steal from her own family members. In fact, in the arc that they just came from, she literally did that. Seriously, that's as they're true, leaving Arlong true. Park, Nami just runs through a crowd of people and pickpockets all of them. All of these people that were willing to die for her like 47 minutes ago, she pickpockets all of them and just frames it as a tender moment. Like, hee hee, there I go again. Do you know <laughs> how much of a sociopath you have to be to steal my wallet? And then say, oh, there I go again. Ain't I a stinker? Like, what? Like, dude, that's my wallet. Like, pictures of my newborn <laughs> baby son are in there. Like, all my insurance information. Like, what are, you, what are you doing? Give me my wallet. And then there's this big-nosed liar in the crew. You're trying to figure out what he does, but, you, like, as this point in the story, that's, that's it. He's a funny like, guy. That description is pretty much all he does. I guess comic relief, maybe. He doesn't really yeah, have a lot a to do. It's kind of sad and kind of funny. Then there's this pervert in a suit that keeps his hands in his pockets, almost certainly so he can play pocket pool whenever he wants. There's this green-haired samurai that wanted to be a pirate hunter until he got kicked off the force for police brutality. And then there's their captain, a crackhead who, as far as you can tell, is motivated by eating and fighting. And that's it. So as soon as you get to Whiskey Peak, you peace out because, you know, they're crazy and you want to mm -hmm. feel safe. So Whiskey Peak is a bounty hunter island. So while you're trying to gather more intel and things like that, the entire island is trying to get the Straw Hats drunk so they can collect on their bounties. So they do this and all of the Straw Hats get drunk. And so while they're tr about bounty to try to either island. kill them or capture them, they're getting ready to do that. The samurai that wanted to be a pirate hunter until he got kicked off the force for police brutality, he reveals that he is not drunk at all. He's awake and he's about to start murdering everybody. You think this is get awful? Enough alcohol. You have to save your nation. You got to get away from him. He's just going on a rampage. He gets you cornered. You think, oh no, this is it. I can't beat him. What am I going to do? But to your surprise, he runs right past you and just starts cutting up every minority he can see. Like every single dark skinned person that you see, <laughs> oh, no. he's just going after them. He's got blood in his eyes. He's drooling a little bit. It's really uncomfortable to see, but you know, it. you feel bad, but you do have a nation to save. So you. Was he drooling? <laughs> Zoro wasn't drooling. Come on. This guy's exaggerated. Do you think you just. I, I, I just. I gotta keep going, okay? So you're just watching this guy just kill every single minority that he can find. And it is just. It's, it's awful to look at. But then after that, the crackhead wakes up and he starts trying to fight the samurai that wanted to be a pirate hunter until he got kicked off the force for police brutality. So they start fighting. You don't really know why. You think, hopefully, the Captain Crackhead is trying to address some of the racism that his teammate is displaying. But as far as you can tell, he just again wants to fight there's not really a reason for it you think all right it doesn't matter i gotta get out of here whatever <laughs> but then two baroque's works agents show up and they're like we know your princess vivi prepare to die and you're like oh no so you start running until the baroque's work agents end up running into the crackhead and the samurai that wanted to be a pirate hunter until he got kicked off the force for police brutality and they just get they just get messed up okay they were no <laughs> match for either of them your princess vivi so you realize now okay so i i need to get to alabasta i don't have a ship everybody here has been murdered like you guys seem like you are insane okay but i need somebody to depend on can you please get me to alabasta like i would be ever so grateful so you ask them and of course they're terrible people so you think there's no way they're going to agree to that and to your surprise they're all on board not because they want to save alabasta at all no far from it the crackhead just wants to get into another fight and then the green-haired samurai that wanted to be a pirate hunter until he got kicked off the force for police brutality he just wants to find more minorities to cut up and then nami <laughs> the sociopath that steals from literally everybody aye, aye, wants aye. to find her way to the palace so she can get a reward she wants to rob that palace blind yeah oh yeah they only agreed to it because nami was like well i want money and she, she heard that vivi is a princess so they must be loaded <laughs> oh my god their motives at the start weren't that nice hmm Hmm, oh yeah. It, it was like um, Nami convinced Zoro and Luffy to bring Vivi because she wants the money.
Mm, I remember that. Okay, okay. You can see it in her eyes. She's going to rob you. But you don't have a choice. You need to trust these people, okay? So they agree to take you to Alabasta, so you start going to the next island. You get to the next island. It's an island called Little Garden, okay? You get Middle to Little Garden. Garden. It's an island where these two giants have been fighting yeah, for blah, 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 100 blah. years. They frame it as in, like, this honorable competition where no one backs down, and they always fight at the exact same time every day. Mm -hmm, the crackhead mm -hmm. likes this. The crackhead and the liar like this a whole lot. The liar yeah, likes it because it's it. bravery to aspire to. The the crackhead just likes it when people fight. He he is truly a degenerate. But you guys are taking in the sights, you know, everything like that, until more Baroque agents show up. And this time it's somebody named Mr. Three and the other Mr. two people Three. that tried to assault you on the other island. So it's three of them there and they work out this plan to incapacitate the giants and separate you from all the other people so that they can definitely kill you. Because again, it's very pivotal for this rebellion to happen and they need to make sure that you end up dead or at the very least not in Alabasta when it goes down. So Mr. Three has wax powers, okay? He ate a wax yes. devil fruit so he encases you in like this wax sculpture so you're stuck there it's you the samurai <laughs> no that wanted power. to be a pirate hunter until oh, he weird. got kicked off the force for police brutality and the sociopathic thief the three of you are stuck in this wax sculpture and you think this is terrible i need to save my country but you know maybe this isn't the end like these guys are really strong maybe they've got something up their sleeve so you look towards your they left don't. at the samurai and the samurai has begun cutting his legs off you go what what are you doing? Like, what, what, what are you going to do after you do that? Like, what's the plan here? And he looks you dead in your eyes and he says, I don't know. And he keeps <laughs> cutting his legs off. You think, I'm doomed. I am certainly dead. I'm going to die oh next to these idiots. That was so And there's silly. nothing I can do. But then you remember, not everybody's caught here. Okay, there's still a crackhead just running through the woods somewhere. Like, there's got to be, maybe he can do this. So you start praying. You go, please, crackhead. You really need a miracle here. You cannot die here. You have to save your country. And as soon as you utter that prayer, this half-naked crackhead comes barreling through the woods and starts <laughs> assaulting everyone in sight. You're so happy you start cheering him on. Get him, crackhead! Save us, Captain Crackhead! The giants see the crackhead fighting, and even though they are heavily injured from their fights and as well as the trap that Baroque works have set, they become inspired by this crackhead. They said, I like how you fighting, crackhead! Let me get in on it! So the crackhead and these two giants beat up everybody until there's no more fighting left to be done, and everybody can leave the island safe and sound. Yay. From there you go on to this winter island pick up this adorable reindeer that can understand animals and then it's off to alabasta now i don't think i need to explain this but you have wasted so much time with these crackheads like it had dude dude what you mean you you totally missed that part where nami was sick that's why they have to find a doctor that's why they went to the winter island come on this guy he's just purposefully leaving out the details nami got sick and nami is the navigator they cannot travel without a navigator. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Dude. You left that out? Come on. Um, Vivi and Nami are very close as well. That's why she she agreed. She's like, the, the way to get to Alabasta fastest is if, if Nami is cured. <sighs> Bro, come on, you forget that part. As they Every detour you could possibly make, oh, they make it, okay? They can't help themselves. It gets so bad. So you get to Alabasta and you're like, all right, guys, we've wasted a lot of time. Can we just remember the plan? Let's stay focused. As soon as you no, park they will the not ship, stay focused. you're intercepted by some turtle seals, okay? <laughs> these the turtle, turtle seals, seals know kung fu. It's really wacky, but they can fight. Dude, he remembered the turtle seals, but he didn't remember the part where they went to... To Drum Island. Oh my god, this guy. This guy. Okay, and so they beat up Pinocchio, and they're like, if you want to park here, you're going to have to fight us. And then you're like, before you can explain to everybody, it's fine, let's just park somewhere else. This crackhead has committed another act of animal cruelty. He has beaten up all of the turtle seals. Like, God, I <laughs> he can, likes beating up animals. We have to stop this rebellion. Can we please, please hurry up? So you manage to stop the crackhead from committing more acts of animal cruelty, and you guys make your way to the capital to stop the rebellion. And the crackhead just starts dragging his feet. He's, he's apparently he's just tired. He says, you know what? I just, you know, I quit. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. You're like, you can't quit. Come on. We have to stop this from happening. This this violent revolution, this rebellion that shouldn't happen. You agreed that you didn't like this. What about, you know, come on. And he's just like, listen, I don't care. I just don't care. Like, you know, yeah, people are going to die. <laughs> oh, I yeah, care. I remember You know what I really want to do, though? 
fight that crocodile guy. This crackhead has literally told you to your face. He does not care how many of your friends and family dies. He is fighting crocodile. He doesn't care. Yeah, who you wants to fight so crocodile? You are so angry at this because you thought everybody was on the same page. You were like, I thought we all wanted to save lives. And he's like, no, I just like fighting. That's what I've been saying this whole time. <laughs> and so you're mad. You punch him. You forget he's a crackhead from Florida for like two seconds. He punches you back immediately. He does not care if you're a woman. I mean, you just, you've seen him assault so many animals. I don't know why you thought he wouldn't punch a woman. He hits you so hard. You're like, all right, whatever. You want to you wanna fight him? Fine, whatever. We can just head straight to his casino. You can fight him all you want. Just please don't hit me again. And now we can finally switch to the perspective of Crocodile. Now, Crocodile really has everything figured out. He knows the Straw Hats he are has here. It all he has no idea out. why they're trying to stop this rebellion, but it's not going to matter. He has everything figured out. He now even mm -hmm. knows that they're on their way to the casino. He sets this trap. They end up captured. Every Straw Hat that he knows about. But he doesn't know about two of them which is the adorable reindeer that they picked up on the winter island and also Sanji, the pervert. Dude, I have a feeling this guy has favoritism. He keeps calling uh, Chopper the adorable reindeer. He has a favorite. Uh, I'm on to you, mister. I'm on to you. Oh, this guy. I feel like he, Chopper is the only uh, straw hat pirate character that he likes. <laughs> that keeps his hand. He always says the full summer of Zoro as his name. Yeah, that's true. Hands in his pants. Those two are still free. So while Crocodile has these people imprisoned in his casino basement while there's water slowly rising and crocodiles everywhere, like just a true <laughs> James Bond villain, he gives them his whole evil plan. And then all of a sudden the phone starts ringing. And it's... Do you know this happens with movies and animes? The villain always starts monologuing. Just monologuing about his plans, all of this. This is what I planned. This is my uh, reason for doing this. You can't stop me. You're uh, you're bound. You are caught in the jail and stuff like that. They always do this in movies, huh? All about that evil villain monologue. <laughs> Sanji deserves some more respect. <laughs> Nah, this guy, I don't think he uh, he gives out much respect, only for the adorable reindeer. Sanji, and he baits him outside, and Crocodile knows that it's probably like a trap or a trick, but he's like, you know, <laughs> there's a flood that I'm causing down here, there's alligators everywhere, like, I don't see them escaping, like, I'll bite. Now, like, if there's two straw hats that I missed, I should probably take care of them. So, Crocodile leaves, and from here we need to fully yes. get into the character of Crocodile, okay, because this is when we really need to understand exactly who he is. You are Sir Crocodile, okay? Ooh. You are the baddest villain that's been introduced into the story so far, you have thought yeah. of everything. Thing. You know from your intel that the straw hats are coming here. You thought you knew about all the straw hats. That's why the bait worked, okay? You're coming outside because you were like, you're mad at yourself. You're like, how could there be two extra straw hats that I didn't know about? You're frustrated with your subordinates. You don't know who you can trust. You just know that you need to take care of this, okay? So you go outside, you take the bait. Unfortunately, their plan works. Somehow the straw hats escaped. You're not really <laughs> tripping about it, but you know you got to take care of Vivi. Vivi could stop this war from happening, and you can't have that. So you go after him, and you try to kill Vivi. But when you try to kill Vivi, the crackhead jumps in and he's like, you guys go ahead. Go to the capital and try to stop the revolution from happening. I can handle this guy. And you are flabbergasted, okay? Because you are There's a no low way, right? devil fruit user. The most powerful devil fruit user that we've seen to the story <laughs> up until this point, by the way. So it's a sand Logia devil fruit. So you are able to basically turn your body into sand. So no matter how many times Luffy tries to hit you, it's not gonna work. Every time you'll just turn into sand, okay? The only weakness that you have is water. But as we've explained Water. earlier, the dance powder that you've been stealing from this country to make it rain is no longer in this country. So there is a massive deficit of water. So like the weakness that you have pretty much non-existent in this entire nation. Like you have really propped yourself up to be that guy. So you, you that have a badass guy. moment, you throw an hourglass Unbeatable. in the sand. You're like, all right, listen, I can give you three minutes. That's it. I don't have any more time to waste on you. So you beat him up, okay? You beat him down. He is no match for you. You impale him, and then for a brief <laughs> moment, some water gets on you from the water jug that he have. You think, that's weird. How did he have water? But you don't let it get to you because you're like, you know, he could have had that on his ship. It doesn't matter. Whatever. And for a second, you think he kind of caught on to, like, if you get wet, you could be hit. But it doesn't matter. You beat him up, you've impaled him, <laughs> and you've made a quicksand pit. So you beat him up, you impaled him, and then you throw him in the quicksand now we gotta pause here for a second because think about that 
You are Sir Crocodile, the most intelligent, hardworking villain that has yes. been introduced to the story up until this point. You have just yes. beat up the protagonist, impaled him, and thrown him into a quicksand pit in the middle of the desert. This isn't like what normally happens where people don't do the double tap or they don't wait to make sure that somebody's dead. You beat him up, impaled him, and threw him into a quicksand pit and watched him disappear. Okay, you did everything you were supposed to do. He's out of the picture. So you go to the Capitol, and with you going to the Capitol is the baddest woman in all of One Piece, Nico Robin in the cowboy hat. She is the most down the girl that you have ever known woman. in your entire life. She will do anything for you, like you and her are like this. And she's pivotal for what you really want, which I'm about to explain. Your true goal is to find an ancient weapon, and the way that yes. you do that is by reading an ancient stone tablet. Now, Miss Nico Robin in the cowboy hat, she is the only person that can read this stone tablet so again another reason for you and her to be like this okay you guys yeah, are never yeah, gonna betray each other you guys are like Powerful. this it's awesome Shortly. she's awesome and just she's she's so bad she's so bad so <laughs> you and nico robin in the cowboy hat this guy has two favorites okay i have discovered that this guy has two favorites his two favorites are chopper and nico robin i mean they're very cute together nico and chopper dynamic is so cute <laughs> Yeah, they they both love books. They love hanging out. Mm, I love it. Very cute. Make your way to the palace. You beat up the king and you make them tell you where the <laughs> stone me. tablet is. But after that, Vivi comes running up and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. Vivi, I guess you made it. Too bad we <laughs> already know what we need to know when the rebellion is literally happening as we speak and you couldn't stop anything. That's just tragic. Tell you what, Nico Robin in the cowboy hat, why don't you take King Cobra to the stone tablet and wait for me there? I, I got to do some villain monologue. Base props understandable. Which, to be clear, <laughs> you've earned. This entire arc has gone the way that you've seen so. And not even a crackhead has stopped you, okay? So you've done better than everybody up until this point. So you laugh at Vivi's face and you think, you know, I should probably still take care of you, though. So you throw her off the building. You look up at the sky to do your evil villain laugh. And while you're looking up, you see something. Hey, you a go, bird. Is that a bird? And no, it's not a bird. It's a crackhead riding a bird coming down to run the ones with you. The same crackhead that you beat up, <laughs> stabbed, threw into a quick he sand lives. pit in the middle of the desert. That he has now returned, lives. riding a bird and carrying a barrel of water. You were like, I know that's not who I think it is. Really put yourself in crocodile shoes, okay? You beat him up stabbed him, threw him into a quicksand pit in the middle of the desert, and now he has somehow returned with a barrel of water and fast travel. Like, how? How did he do that? So this time, because he has the barrel of water and he's figured out your weakness, he starts putting water on his fists to beat you up. He is kind of fighting this time. So this is the equivalent of, like, you beat up a crackhead and it's easy for you. He shows up a little bit later, but he's fighting harder. You still beat him, though, and you get rid of all that pesky water, okay? So you're like, okay, I don't know where you found this water, but there should not be any more in this entire nation, okay? The water's gone. You beat him up, and then you grab no him more and water. use your other devil fruit power to turn him into a mummy, okay? So now you're like, this <laughs> oh <my> surely <laughs> is over. <laughs> Look at that. He's so shriveled up. He's a shriveled up zombie. <laughs> was, this scene was so weird, though. So evil and weird. I love it. Okay, so you mummify him and you throw him off the building just like you did Vivi. You look up at the sky for any other crackheads riding birds that might save him from the fall, and you do a maniacal laugh and you make your way to Miss All Sunday in the mausoleum. You show up and you're a little bit tired. The barrel of water like, oh, is like Jack Sparrow with his jar. <laughs> That's true. Oh, baby. <laughs> it works. It. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. And she's like, actually, there's nothing on this stone tablet that says where Pluton is. Like, you can't believe it. You were sure that this was where Pluton was, but then something mm -hmm. else clicks for you. When you beat up that crackhead in the middle of the desert, Nico Robin in the cowboy hat, she was with you. So that means the only way that he could have come out is if she pulled him out. And now she's not telling you where Pluton is. You're like, wow. Is you with me or what? You know? So you get into an is argument you with, with your me girl. Or what? Things get heated. She gets upset. You get upset. But then in the middle of that argument, you hear somebody screaming your name. You turn around, and this bloody beaten crackhead has come back to <laughs> run back the ones with you in this basement of a mausoleum. You were like, Hell what? Yeah. Okay, sit, for real. Stop. Okay, everybody pause. How are you what still base? here? Yeah, so but you see this crackhead, fine. and you're like, all right, it does not matter how you're still here. All right, I'm tired of this. I'm ending this. You don't have any more water so you can't and before you can finish that sentence he punches you right in the face and sends you flying through a wall 
The One Piece is real. It is real. Hmm? The rules of the world that you have been living your life by are suddenly crumbling right before you. You were like, time out. How? How did you do that? What's going on? There's no water around at all. And then you look at his knuckles and you see that this crackhead has started using his own blood to beat you senseless. You were like, is this really how this day is going to end up for me? <laughs> and it is. This crackhead is now fighting harder than ever. When he should be exhausted, he is beating you up with his own bloody knuckles. You realize just how much of a crackhead that he is and how you were just woefully underprepared to throw hands with him. So you think, listen, I'm tired of this, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm so tired of this, all right? So you bring out your poison dagger and you're like, that's <laughs> it. Dagger. I'm gonna stab you with this poison dagger. <laughs> so you stab him, so now he's poisoned. So keep in mind, all of this happens within the span of the day. All of this happens in the span of the day. Couldn't be more than just like a few hours. You have beaten up this crackhead on two separate occasions. The first time you stabbed him and threw him in a quicksand pit. And the second time after you beat him up, you turned him into a mummy. Ooh. Now you have Thank poisoned you him. Beats. And Thank you surely much. he should be done by now, right? But he shows Thank no signs of beat. slowing down. You are so frustrated, but you think, you know what? It's fine, okay? There's a bomb that's gonna go off in the city and maybe that's gonna do something that's gonna turn the tides. It might even kill him. Like I'm a Logie a devil fruit user, so I'm gonna be fine. Like it should be fine. You start praying for the bomb to go off but it's just not coming you're like what is going on and you start waiting you keep fighting them until eventually mm -hmm. the bomb does go off but it goes off in the sky you were like mm -hmm. what, what's happening out there what's what's going on out there none of this is making sick you you well your subordinates are not doing their job very well that's what's happening mm. yes Fight very loud. No, 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 no fighting allowed. You look right at the crackhead and you're like, what did you do? What are you doing? Who are you? Why are you doing this? Why are you here? <laughs> why don't you just go home? Why, why, why? And he looks you dead in your eyes and he goes, I just like fighting. And he starts whooping your ass again. So you are exhausted, okay? You don't know how you're going to stop this crackhead, but you know you got to keep fighting. But this crackhead is showing no Hello, signs Quantum. of slowing down. If anything, for whatever reason, he's getting even more powerful now that he's using his own blood to beat you up. So he is just wrecking you until finally it's just all over. You can't keep up. He launches <laughs> you out of the basement, through the ceiling, and out into the real world. You are knocked out. And on the way out, he picks up Nico Robin in the cowboy hat. So from Crocodile's perspective, this crackhead has followed him to his basement, beat him up in his <laughs> own house, and then took his girl. And then on his way out, he told the Navy, oh yeah, that, that guy's a criminal. So they arrest you. Not only do you get beaten up and your girl taken from you by a crackhead, but you are going to jail. That has uh -oh. got to be the worst day that Crocodile has ever had, bar none. And I just feel so bad for him because he really did everything Aww. right. But that's it, guys. <laughs> Alabasta from the perspective of Crocodile. I just feel so bad for him, to be honest. And to be honest, it really makes me think that Doflamingo probably feels a similar way because he <laughs> was Crocodile if he succeeded. And it's just, you know, it just goes to show whenever you come face to face with that crackhead, just just avoid him. Just just don't try to fight him. It, it's yeah, not worth it. It truly is not worth it. That's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching. It's a good Thank video. you for being interested. And I will see you next time. Mm, that's a good video. Good summary. Good summary. I like it. You will be Luffy frying? Explosion Luffy. Man. I really want this poster now. Mm. Well, that's a good summary. <laughs> that's pretty nice, pretty nice. But I cannot forgive him for forgetting about um, why they went to Drum Island in the first place. He... he uh, purposefully left that out of the video why they had to go to drum island he was talking about the seals the fighting turtle seals but he left out the part where they went to drum island come on come on come on come on <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. you're a poopy head no when we spell it out, you're a poopy head. I'm not a poopy head. This is the ending song. Ending song. This is the ending song. <laughs>